Welcome to the Tail Slate. I'm Ben Stacy, and I'm here with Melissa D'Agostino, Matt Campagna, and Michael Oakes. And today we are talking about Suicide Squad. So we have an interesting panel in that some of us liked the movie quite a bit, and some of us Not didn't so like it as much. Not so much, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I, first of all, I, I liked it. I, I found it very enjoyable. I had a good time watching it. Uh, there are characters that I wasn't too familiar with, so it was nice meeting these new characters, and I, and I appreciated most of the characters. I will acknowledge some of the problems, which I'm sure we're going to be talking about as well. Mm -hmm. So what about yourself? Um, I wanted to like it. I loved the trailers. I, I loved the build-up to it. Um, I was really disappointed. Uh, I thought it was a bit of a mess, frankly. Uh, there were things I liked about it, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about. But uh, overall, I felt um, kind of let down. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was basically watching a studio destroy a film. <laughs> like, uh, sort of like in Fantastic Four, Fan Four Stick, um, where they just had something that they greenlit and then partway through decided, sorry, we're making a different movie. And so parts didn't make sense and there were clear moments that were reshot, characters that were inconsistent. And I feel like most of Jared Leto's Joker's on the cutting room floor and there's this like reshot mess that's in there instead. I'm not, I'm not too, too surprised that they had him on the cutting floor just because of how he acted. I'm, heard, I'm sure all of you have heard the stories about what he did and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as my opinion goes, I, I'm kind of mixed. You hating, you loving, I'm kind of like on the sort of teetering edge. Mm -hmm. I like it for a movie. I don't like it because of the comics. Because I don't like that they're like, you know, deviating from the comics too much. But yeah. that's just the, you know, nerd. Yeah, me. My, yeah, my view of that is always it's a different animal, it should be its own yeah, and story. I've, I've it's actually, not like you're adapting a novel. You know, yeah. you're taking characters. I was with somebody mm. at the time when I was coming out of this movie and I was talking to them about like, what did you think? And it was exactly that. I said, I have two different opinions. It was, I thought it was a great movie, but I was disappointed because they didn't do, they didn't live up to the hype. And mm. then she was basically, she said, yeah, I love it. But, and then I asked her, have you ever seen the, like read the comics or anything? And she was like, no, I haven't seen a single bit. So, mm. and that's been the opinion for everybody that I've seen is if you haven't read anything or seen any of the old stuff, loved it. Hmm. Cool. So. So let's mm. talk about the things that we, we did like. Um, so what did you like, Michael? Let's I liked Jared, Le uh, Leto, Le Jared Leto's Joker. Um, I loved his characteristic. Um, the Joker has kind of been in three main stages. There's been the mas the evil mastermind, which was like the really, really old Joker. Um, then the second one was like uh, he was the prankster. They mm -hmm. never killed anybody, that sort of thing. And then they, we have the current one, which is just psychopath, mm -hmm. essentially. And after... Uh, Keith Ledger has done his, that was more like the mastermind, and this one's going back to the psychopath one, which I really like, because you can actually see how well he like portrayed psychopath. I thought Heath Ledger did a good psychopath, but anyway. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I yeah. feel like Heath Ledger was the psychopath. This, to me, the theory of, of Jared Leto's Joker is more interesting than the execution. The theory is, when the Joker was invented in the early half of the 20th century, he was part clown, part gangster. And so what a gangster was back then was like this slick suit wearing, hat wearing, yeah, jive talking, yeah. like badass character for the time. And so fast forward to the 21st century and a gangster is now like this, like this gang banger, tattooed kind of, kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, what this Joker was was really neat. Mm -hmm. But the execution, to me, didn't work because I just didn't enjoy him uh, in the role. And I also didn't feel like we got a consistent Joker. I feel like mm. there were moments where he was a psychopath and moments where he was rescuing Harley Quinn. And that scene was terribly reshot and mm. badly ADR'd to be a rescue instead of an execution. Mm. That scene was him trying to kill Harley Quinn in the, in the script. And now it's him trying to save her. And it's like, no wonder the movie didn't work okay. when that's what's so happening. So actually on that point, because this is where I find this really fascinating. Um, just to go back to the like Heath Ledger's, just for a very small moment, um, the reason that they say that he's a mastermind more than a psychopath is because looking at what he actually does, it seems like he's acting insane, but everything he does is very well coordinated and very well thought out, right? Whereas the mm -hmm. Heath Ledger, sorry, the uh, Jared Leto one that we have right now, it's basically everything he does is only one direction that he's actually gone in consistently is saving Harley Quinn. And the thing that I mm -hmm. find very interesting is that um, Jared Leto and Harley Quinn have, sorry, the Joker and Harley Quinn have the exact opposite reactions to being with each other as they do with not being with each other. Um, 
Heath Le or the Joker, sorry, um, is unhinged when he's not with Harley Quinn, but when he's with Harley Quinn, he's grounded. Whereas the Harley Quinn is the exact opposite. She's completely crazy when she's with the Joker, but you see when the Joker dies or seems to that she just loses all the crazy and kind of like she's all sort of sort of normal now. Almost. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that they... My thing is, I don't know how much of the Joker that we saw in the movie had to do with Jared Leto's performance or with the problems I had with the narrative of the film. True. Like, I felt like I had no idea what he was doing there most of the time, and they didn't actually go very deep in exploring the relationship between Harley mm -hmm. Quinn and the Joker. Yep. So I thought, why is he even here? I mean, if he, they were going to make him a more compelling villain, I thought maybe that's where they were going, and I was like, that might be interesting. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I feel like we didn't really get a chance to see Jared Leto actually do a lot with that character because of the way they built that story. That's yeah. how I felt about I it. I wonder if that's the choice of story or if that's just because they thought maybe I, he I went a little I think that's too choice far. of uh, studio, and we'll talk a bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that in seems a like meddling. But so, what, what did you like, Matt? Um, one of the things that stood out that you actually I really thought, enjoyed. I thought Margot Robbie was an excellent Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. um, inconsistent and like there were moments where her accent fell in and out. Mm -hmm. But when you reshoot a movie and jumble it up, I don't blame Margot Robbie for that. Uh, a little bit David Ayer, mostly the studio. Um, I, I really liked all of the characters. And I feel like if we had seen more of them, I would have liked them even more. Mm -hmm. um, this, was, this to me was, uh, was two love stories. This whole movie was about two yeah, love stories. It was about June Moon and Rick Flag, yeah. and it was about um, it was about Harley Quinn and Puddin. It was about <laughs> Mr. J and her. And I feel like when the script was originally written, um, the idea was the the Enchantress love story w would be a beautiful story where Rick Flag is trying to stop his love but save his love, and that mm -hmm. it's all like that's that's big. And I can see why why Tom Hardy originally had that role. Mm. And the fact that he was busy shooting The Revenant and then Bad Robocop had to come in to replace him. Um, <laughs> honestly, way better. Joel Kinnerman did a great job compared to his role in Robocop, and I immediately started to like Joel Kinnerman in the first like 20 minutes of the movie. But then, m like most of the film, I found it one note, and Joel Kinnerman suddenly started to grate on me. Mm. And it was weird. But I initially really liked him. Um, I really liked all the characters at first. And then about halfway through the movie, I stopped caring because none of them had any change. Mm. None of them grew. Yeah. Not, like, Harley Quinn didn't eventually spurn the Joker and walk away from him, which was originally what this movie was going to do at the ending. Mm. You, may, you may remember cool images of the Joker half burned up with a grenade in his hand. Mm, Adding in right, the movie yeah, right, because yeah. we played that the Joker didn't show up again later. Mm. In the original edit, he did. Mm. So I feel like the thing I like about this movie the most is the one we'll never see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of my likes lead to like slight disappointments, but I'll say them anyway. Uh, I thought all the acting was really strong. I love Viola Davis. Oh, um, yes. I just she thought she was so great. I feel like I liked Will Smith. I thought the acting was really strong, but I felt like they didn't have enough interesting layers to play uh, as the movie progressed, similar mm -hmm. to what you were saying, Matt. Um, but, I, but I really liked it. And I, and I also, um, I was really into... Um, the music in the film, but I also felt that they didn't, it felt a little bit gratuitous to me. Like, I feel like it was a little bit of a gag. Um, mm. I, I liked it, um, but I feel like, say, in the movie like Gardens of the Galaxy, yeah, I feel like they better. implemented yep. and integrated the music uh, in, a, in a more interesting way. Well, and the music in Guardians of the Galaxy is emotional for the yes, lead character because exactly. the music is in the movie yes. Yes. whereas this the music was on the movie yeah. that's right and it right. was just like you like this song so you'll like this scene that's not no. how that works <laughs> yeah it's interesting I, so i guess the big problems with this and I, I i suspect almost every problem we have in this movie is because of the studios the studio the execs that yeah. were they're scared they want to make it work but by meddling you're screwing it up even some of the stuff that did actually work it, it could have become be part of that the music, I suspect, was a reaction to the music being used in the trailers, mm -hmm. perhaps. And they went, oh, well, let's put some of that in. Mm -hmm. Some scenes it worked. I thought some it, it didn't. Agreed, yeah. yeah. I um, feel like it worked at the very beginning, which is actually kind of how I feel about the majority of the movie, is that like, it worked at the very beginning, and then they kind of dropped off a lot of it. Well, that's usually yeah. when you mess around with a movie. You're generally not messing mm -hmm. around with the beginning. This one they do. A little bit. This one, the beginning, the beginning in the script, and in David Ayer's original yeah. cut, is June Moon 
becoming possessed by the Enchantress. That's at the beginning of the film. In fact, the beginning of the film sets up that love story much more. Much hmm. Whereas in the test screenings for test audiences, people wanted to see more Will Smith and more Margot Robbie, and that's why the movie starts the way it does. Who are these test audiences? I they agree. should be shot. I oh, God. Agree. <laughs> and the people who should be shot are the people at Warner Brothers who say, yes, Zack Snyder, make the movie you want to make. Go crazy. And then say, no, David Ayer, don't make the movie yeah. you want to make. Like, freaking switch those. <laughs> yeah. That's just sad. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't mind how they introduced the characters. I thought it was an, an interesting way to do those little short vignettes. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I did. I felt it went on too long, which is Perhaps. part of my thing of like, there's so many characters that's also to establish. They had, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they had too many to introduce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I thought they were perfect length, so if they had like half the characters, it would have been good. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, to go on to a point, that actually, you were bringing up yeah. earlier, before we forget about it, um, they actually kind of, I, I get the whole like recutting and stuff, but they kind of slipped up with one of the points. I felt like that whole love story with uh, June Moon and uh, Rick Flagg, mm -hmm. they kind of dropped off the ending, but they mm -hmm. hinted at the ending at the very beginning of the movie with the whole she's scared of him sort of thing. Um, because they were trying to drag him off all the time. I mm. felt, I was like, I kept getting the indication that like the ending of the movie, which would be like a huge foreshadow, would be like, he's making June Moon come back by just being the love. And then it just never happened. I was like, wait, what happened to that? Yeah, you know? I think you're right. That would have made, so. that would have made that whole idea make some sense. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. they just kind of stopped. Yeah. You know? It's, it's interesting. Uh, Again, I think, yeah, it is, it's studio interference that's messing these things up. And it's sad because you really wanted to like the movie, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I did. Yeah. I still enjoyed it. I found it was fun to watch. But I admit, yes, it could have been a far superior movie. Yeah. yeah. And we were robbed of that. Like I you said, you'd so rather watch that other yeah. movie. I was so excited to go watch some characters that were not a retread of when I liked someone else play this character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all the main characters in this, because the Joker was always sort of this like fun side idea mm -hmm. that the Suicide Squad was gonna be all these characters you'd never seen an actor play before. And I just feel like my excitement for that, for not seeing a character I could compare to Christopher Reeve's version of it, or yeah. to, or, or to um, Christian Bale, or to um, my favorite Michael Keaton, um, I was so excited for this fresh, new, awesome, exciting idea, and I just feel like it came in so far under my expectation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, before I wrap up, I just want to mention, of course, Batman. What do you think? He was his used well in this. One movie, of the right? best parts of the yeah. movie. Yeah, Batman and the Flash. Yes, exactly. That was yeah. cool yeah. seeing the Flash in that as well. Yeah. 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 Um, but the problem with this, because the trailers were so good, it makes me worry. And we're going to be talking about uh, the trailers for Justice League and for Wonder Woman, yeah. which both look amazing. But it makes you worry. <laughs> oh, yep. Because absolutely. Warner Brothers has to take a hands off approach and let the filmmakers, the people that know what they're doing, do their stuff. Well, they got mm -hmm. bit so hard when they did that for Zack Snyder twice. Yeah. And I think what you need to do is let every great filmmaker you're hiring slip up once. And then yeah. if they've slipped up once, then you go don't let them slip up again. Exactly. Once they make a man of steel, once they cock it up that bad, yeah, Zack Snyder then needs you step now. in. <laughs> yes. th th yeah, then you step in yes, and you always. fix his idea for Batman v Superman. Mm -hmm. um, they let him do two movies, hands off, and he screwed them both up. Yeah. David Ayer makes great films, mm -hmm. yeah. so let him screw up Suicide Squad. And if everybody loved it, then you can take credit. But they can't exactly. do that because they're so invested in their yeah. desire to beat Marvel. Like, I feel like part of what's happening yeah. is this. It's a rush to cash up. Yes. Yeah, they're pumping them out too, too fast. Yeah. yeah. And they're getting worried. There's a reason Justice League is now Justice League and only one Justice League. It's because they can't afford two Justice Leagues that bomb. Yeah. It's not because it yeah. was like a creative decision. That's money. Uh, just. Mm -hmm. Spend the time on the scripts. You start with a good script, mm -hmm. good story, you're, you're good to go. And then make yep. it so that that script you have greenlit is the one you're going to put in the theaters. Mm -hmm. They've made this mistake twice. The first time was by greenlighting a 200-page David Goyer Batman v Superman. You can't make that into one movie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, that's basic filmmaking. You should yep. know that. And also, if you greenlight a great script that Ayers put together, or co-written at least, then put that one in the theaters. You yep. greenlit it. Have some balls. So there you go. I mean, I, I, I think... Yeah, no, <laughs> I or think have some ovaries. Exactly, the case whatever. Thank you. I exactly. I ask one question, and this is kind of just to finish this thing off. Who do you think was the most disappointing character? 
Uh, oh. Disappointing? Yes. I personally think Slipknot because they completely I didn't, I didn't know him. I didn't what care. What even so was Slipknot? Yeah, they, I, they, they didn't bother me because I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. The thing about Slipknot is that it's a running gag that Boomerang constantly blows up Slipknot. He always <laughs> abuses Slipknot into like the first time they met. Um, there was it was like a wrist thing, not a neck thing, mm. and and Slipknot gets his arm blown off because exactly the same thing happens. Oh, cool. Boom, Boomerang's just a jerk, basically, yeah. and Slipknot keeps paying the price. Right, but if we if they built that relationship up and then there was a gag about that, if there was a way of us being yeah. included in that in gag, yeah, 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 that yeah, exactly. would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, but I they agree. literally just basically did a demonstration as if they just had the little chip on a like a pedestal and blew it up. Anyways, that was exactly the same result but, as him just doing. But it's, I mean, it's more cool. They shot they shot that. the movie right. in Can- <laughs> yeah they shot the movie in Canada. You need to have like you know the the actor in town that you can use a bit in the movie and then blow them up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Guess, yeah, hey, that was a good part of the seeing Toronto. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I, I say go see it if you haven't seen it. Although we've given away a lot. Mm-hmm. Here's a lot <laughs> so if you're Spoiler. watching this first, you're you're a fool. But um, go see the movie. I mean, it's worth seeing. I think. What do you think? Mm-hmm. For the sake yeah. of seeing it. For no other reason. For no other reason. Like, <laughs> I will say, like, um, the biggest disappointment for me, just to throw this last thing in, is that I was excited uh, as, a, as a woman, as a filmmaker, as, a, as an actor. I was like, oh, there's interesting female characters. There's people of color. I was really excited about that, and I feel like they really failed to deliver mm. on making that. Um, <laughs> they was just problematic, I felt. So I feel like, go see it, yes, but go in knowing that you're maybe uh, going to see some things that fall short of your expectations, potentially. Take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I'd say if you're in the minority of people who haven't seen it, because the thing just broke records, yeah. um, <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, don't see it. Wait for it to come out on DVD, and then some fan out there is going to edit together with the deleted scenes <laughs> a far better version yeah. of this film. I'd like say it's wait. it's going to be spoiled by then. I mean, with the amount of people that have seen it, everybody's going to be talking yeah, about there's it. nothing uh, to so spoil. Yeah. Yeah, there's exactly. nothing left to the spoil. The plot doesn't movie. make much sense, anyway. Yeah. So. There's, there's, <laughs> no, there's no plot to spoil. There's no plot twist to spoil. There's a moment in it where they play that there's a plot plot twist, but you've already seen most of that scene. There's like so. a negative plot twist. Like they were going to do a plot twist and you saw the plot twist coming and then boom, it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't think there's anything to spoil. I yeah. would say wait, watch it on DVD. But watch it. Yeah. You'll like the music. There you go. <laughs>